Hey guys, Jim here. Wanted to talk to you a few minutes about a uh, pretty interesting little knife, something that I have been curious about for a little while. Um, never had the chance to get my hands on one. Seen a few going back and forth on forums and uh, just people selling them back and forth. And uh, my curiosity was piqued. Uh, this is a Sasha Tile Officer. And before we get off on anything, there's nobody seems to know how to pronounce his name. I've done as much research as I can. I've never actually seen anything that shows you how to pronounce his name. He's a French custom knife maker. And the reason I'm going with tile instead of teal or tail is because he has one model um, that he calls the tech and then he has his name on there. So I, I kind of think of it like uh, how Brian Ty connects his name into the model names that he uses, Tycoon and Tyrade, and it teaches you how to pronounce his name, basically. So I'm thinking tactile, like tactility, like a particular type of grip uh, on the knife. That's the way I'm looking at it, and I could be mistaken. I'm just going to stick with that because it sounds uh, somewhat, I don't know, correct. So what you've got here is actually a pretty interesting little knife. Uh, until he started manufacturing these, he had only done custom knives. This was his first mid-tech venture. And right off the bat, uh, just to give you guys the warning, a lot of people had a lot of issues with lock rock on these. I have already taken a look at this. I see no indications of lock rock on this, so I think I'm going to be okay. Generally, what you're going to be getting into is a really cool, kind, almost an Anzo pattern uh, style of texture G10. The other variation he makes is this in the carbon fiber. Now, when you go to the tactile, you can get uh, full tie titanium on both sides. And the reason I was attracted to this was the overall shape. When you look at this, I thought it had a, just a, a really beautiful look to it. A little bit Spyderco. There's a little bit of, of a few different knives in here, but it, it seemed somewhat unique. I liked the blade grind. I like having this very elongated swedge, and it's a very gentle swooping swedge as it comes down from the spine. Uh, really, really nice flat grind on here. Does a nice job. There is his maker's mark right there. Nice carbon fiber. Does add a lanyard hole back here. That's a nice plus. And on these carbon fiber versions, you can get different G10 backspacers. This one happened to have orange that was made available to me. Uh, I, I actually, I don't own a single orange knife or anything with orange in it. I've always kind of avoided it because I've never really been attracted to it. But there's something about this knife against the black, having that orange, I actually really, really like it. Even just barely holding it at an angle. I love that little sliver of color that comes out. So this was actually a really nice balance. I would have done blue or something, but I really like the uh, I like that orange. It's a Bowler N690 steel, so it's a it's a it's a good steel. Nothing you know to write home about. Nothing crazy. The other complaints I've seen from other people uh, was they were saying that the pivots were so tight and the action was so rough. This is actually really nice on my particular example. It won't flick every single time, but... And again, I'm just using the access hole. I'm not using what you would normally want to uh, refer to as the, the thumb studs, but they're actually going to be uh, the blade stop. I'm not altogether too crazy about a blade stop hitting in carbon fiber. Uh, that's just my thing. Uh, it's a personal thing. I, I don't know what kind of wear that's going to cause in the future. Here is the lockup for those that may have that concern. And as you see, I have no lock rock whatsoever. So I'm very, very happy with that. I like the little details that he adds. It does kind of make you feel a little bit like you're getting into a custom knife when you're seeing details like this being done. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the full backspacer. If I have to have a backspacer, I'd rather be as small as possible. So, yeah, I mean, this is going to get caught up with uh, dirt and pocket lint and sand and whatever else you happen to be rolling around in. 
I mean, it's not the worst thing in the world. It's not the hardest thing to clean out. It's just I prefer a nice, clean, flow-through design with standoffs. I think it's an unusually long pocket clip. I see no reason for it. The pocket clip could be half the size and be every bit as effective. But I, uh, I have carried it, and I got to tell you, it's, it's perfect retention. I've been battling with a few knives lately. Most recently was uh, that... Uh, was it the Microtech DOC? That thing you had to pry it open with one hand, hold the pocket lip with the other, and slide it in until it got to the open point. This you literally just drop right into the pocket. Super simple, and it's got nice retention and stays in there firm. Uh, let me give you some size comparisons here because everybody seems to like that. Uh, this is a three and a half inch blade, so that's going to make it a little bit shorter in blade length than a large Sabenza like you see here. But the overall length, actually, you know what, damn, that is really, that is really, really close. Obviously, the Sabenza has the uh, larger blade, but shorter frame. So he's using a little bit more frame here. And on a compact knife, I actually kind of like that on a short blade. Because a lot of times when you get into a three and a half, three and a quarter inch blade, the handle is so short that it doesn't really feel secure in your hand. Another comparison would be the Curtis F3 in the three and a half inch. And that's a very good comparison right there. We're going to move this to the side though, because I think the closest might end up being this guy right here and, and and people have requested that I start using more common knives to do my size comparisons and I totally understand why I just don't own a hell of a lot of production knives so that's a little bit challenging for me however my Manix 2 is probably going to stay in my collection forever so there's your size comparison it's going to be smaller uh, than the Manix 2 almost identical to a large Sabenza and a hair bigger than the Curtis F3. So if you have one or all or any of those knives, that gives you an idea right there. Here's the thing. Um, you know, I, I knew for the price point it wasn't going to blow my mind. They sell at full retail for $350 in the G10, and I'm assuming it sells for the same in the carbon fiber. Everything is done very clean, very nice. You could tell this is a predominantly machine-made knife and not a handbell custom because there's not a single inconsistency, a single flaw. Everything is, is perfectly flush. I mean, there, there's no extra little marks anywhere. I mean, there's just no indications of hand-making, period. And that's fine. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. I'm just you know, giving you guys the full, uh, the full Monty here. The ergonomics are great, feels nice in the hand, in either grip. There's a nice choil here, it's not overdone, and it's, uh, it's certainly not going to be a danger for your fingers because the lead-in for the blade is tucked in right behind the choil, so you're not even going to come in contact with that. For the price at $350, I don't know. I, don't, I would have a hard time telling somebody buy this instead of a base version Strider SNG. And somebody actually asked me about that on Instagram, how I think it compares to an SNG. I no longer have an SNG, or I'd be more than happy to put them in here side by side. I don't feel it's built. It's as overbuilt. I don't think it's going to be as tough and rugged and made for the same purposes. I think this is more of the everyday man's EDC, not particularly someone that may bring it into action uh, or, or do anything abusive with it. Uh, the tip comes down fairly fine. Uh, I, I, again, I'm not the kind of person that really condones using knives as pry bars. Um, there's certainly enough custom makers right now that are offering little pry bars that you can put on your keychains and whatever else. There's no real need to do that anymore. But I don't think it's made as solidly or as tough. It's a well put together knife. It's just not in that league, I don't think. The titanium is slimmer. Uh, the carbon fiber side is slimmer. The blade stock would also be slimmer because you're really going to be uh, very close in uh, comparisons uh, on an SNG to the, uh, to the Curtis F3. And you see you've got a much more substantial blade on the Curtis. So, yeah, it, it's not built to that degree, but it doesn't have to be to be a good knife. 
I think it's a nice knife, but I'll be perfectly honest with you. There are production knives, particularly, honestly, made by Spyderco, that cost less. The Tough, for example, that's twice the knife. It's uh, more stout. It's beefier. 3V steel. It's going to beat out uh, N690. This would be a better deal at, what do they charge for these? Between 250 and 3 you can find them as low as 200 if you really, really, really search on eBay from time to time. Um, I would rather have this in my pocket for any time I think I might actually need to use a knife. I'd rather have this in my pocket for an everyday carry where I'm probably not going to need a knife, but if I do, I've certainly got a very capable uh, cutter here, something I can certainly use because there's a, there's a dramatic weight difference and there's a, a fairly dramatic, I just keep knocking my camera all around this week. I apologize. I'm sorry. And there's a fairly dramatic, you know, size difference there as well. You look at the Manix 2, which you can buy for under $100. And I can't honestly tell you that the quality for usefulness is better in the Officer than it is in the Manix 2. Now, the components are more expensive. Uh, I don't believe uh, that there's a much of a difference in the cost of the steels. But yeah, carbon fiber costs more than G10. And this is G10 on both sides. Obviously, titanium costs more than G10. The pocket clip, I don't really see much of a, of a real difference in that. The, oh, you gotta love that. I love how you get interrupted on my videos. Ah, hey Jeff, how are you, buddy? Okay, so <laughs> I'll try to get back to him in a minute. You guys like my uh, my ringtone there? Yeah, thought you'd like that. Screaming goats, you gotta love it. Where was I at on there? I was talking about the lock. The you know we're we're all used to the traditional lock bar by now. Titanium lock bar as uh, created by Chris Reeve used by uh, hundreds of millions. Phenomenal. It's great technology. But I really like the secureness of this lock. We know that it's, it's almost impossible to make this lock fail, period. So, again, it's really hard when you compare a $100 knife to a $350 knife. I didn't pay $350. I'm very fortunate. Um, and honestly, I mean, I really only bought this. I, I bought it out of curiosity, but I could have lived longer without having it. Um, there was a, a member of our knife community that needed to, you know, kind of drum up a little bit of extra money for some medical bills and whatnot that, that they had to pay off. And, you know, a lot of us were spreading the word about it, the stuff that he was selling. And I figured, you know what? I've been curious about the knife. I'd love to do my part to help somebody else. So, uh, uh, Tyler, I hope everything's going great for you, buddy. Uh, thank you for the, uh, the nice price on the knife. And, and yes, I am very happy with it. This is something that I can see just staying in my collection just to have as an everyday carry, everyday user. Bang it up, knock it around, kind of guilt-free. See, you really can't get your finger in that little hole there. Not quite like a spidey hole. And when people see this uh, really cool contrast, they uh, they seem to be pretty amazed by it. They, they seem to really, uh, I don't know, seems to catch their attention. And it, it really has caught mine as well. I might do some stuff in uh, some orange G10 in the future. Titanium side's nice and smooth, nice and clean looking, nice, simple, blasted tie. Again, as I mentioned, the, the real reason I began to be interested in these is the, uh, the blade profile. I think that's a nice look. A little bit aggressive, but not overdone. It's still kind of a classy knife. I mean, this is the kind of knife that, you know, maybe not in carbon fiber, but the kind of thing where, I don't know, you do a little pimping on the blade, uh, maybe do a little bit of satin, hand rub satin, do something fancy here on the scale, maybe, uh, I don't know, Timascus or something like that. And you could actually make this uh, almost an oversized gentleman's folder. It's It's got these nice slim lines. It's when you look at it in the right light, it's actually a very beautiful knife. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Okay, so overall, I would tell you, yes, if you can get the right deal somewhere between uh, 250 and 275 285 somewhere in that range, I think it's a worthy companion. I think it's worthy of having in your collection. It starts getting up over $300, and I honestly believe that you could get more bang for your buck 
with other knives, uh, and there are plenty of them. You know, I, I would honestly rather have a paramilitary two and, and a Manix two for the same same price that I would end up paying for that. You know, that sort of thing. So do keep keep that in mind if you've been curious about them. Uh, you get somewhat of a feeling with the fit and finish. And the materials used, you do get that feeling of a nice quality mid tech. You're not going to get the feeling of a custom, and and I don't want you to believe that you will. You know, there are knives that, like when you pick up like a Todd Beg Bodega, that's a mid tech that is is so leaning toward custom, it's ridiculous. This is a straight up mid tech, but it's not such a big leap up from production. So, good quality knife. There's, I have nothing negative to say about it. Nothing. Great balance, great weight, nice ergonomics, well thought out all the way around, nice jimping. Everything about this knife was very, very well done. And again, in my example, I don't have any lock failure or lock rock. So I can say that the quality here is, is very, very nice. I just don't believe that it's worth the price that they command. And to give you another indication of that, I rarely, actually, I've never seen anyone sell one anywhere near the full retail price. When I see these getting flipped, they're anywhere from $250 to $300. So, you know, it, it's not going to be an investment. But if you get the right price on one, yeah, I think you'd actually really enjoy it. Anyway, that's kind of a uh, little overview of the officer. Great little carry knife. Enjoy, guys. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below.